Well, ladies and gentlemen, I really wish I could say psych right now. It is Joe over, fellas. But we ended up getting a massive W today, okay? We're gonna start this video off with that. But also, we got a list leaking out, okay? I don't think you guys are ready for this one. Like this video if you think there are two genders. Dislike the video if you think there are 5,000 genders. Because you see, for a minute now, we have been beefing, right? Like, suckers have been beefing, suckers have been beefing, beefing, beefing. We beefing, we beefing, we beefing, right? I guess suckers gonna be suckers. But, apparently, check this out. We're gonna cover this in a different video. The reason I'm saying this is because something else just came out, right? That I gotta cover, but this is way too big of a W to ignore. Check this. Japanese politician Satoshi says that Assassin's Creed Shadows is altering the Japanese history and, you know, the promotion of Yasuke, the BBC Samurai. First of all, my black homies, where you at? I, I need the black homies on this one. I need my Japanese homies. I need my white homies. I need everybody, man. I need everybody on this one, man. Because they're disrespecting not just the Japanese culture, but they're disrespecting the black culture as well. Yeah, the only black guy they put in the game who was not gay. If he was gay, if Yasuke, oh, Yasuke was a real person, guys. If he was gay, then okay, it makes sense for them to make him gay, right? He was not. They could have talked about his achievements, but guess what? They made him gay. They made him gay, right? Like, that's, a, that's the first thing they did. And, uh, but, but this Japanese politician is not even... Uh, talking about it right they're talking about uh, ubisoft changing their history which is facts right like they're altering their history and uh he says that he might bring up ubisoft and their upcoming game assassin's creed shadows before the japanese deity oh, shit. i believe that's how you pronounce it but that is apparently the country's legislative body it is too real folks we're gonna cover it extensively very very soon but check this out roll it so this comes from that park place and it's titled sweet baby ink defender who says every lever must be pulled to push lgbtq plus agenda announces she's joined cd project red Mary Kenny of Insomniac, who worked on stuff like Spider-Man 2 and Miles Morales, who has also confirmed that she has worked on the narrative of the upcoming Wolverine game from Insomniac as well. Yeah. We know this because it said so in her Twitter bio. And we also it is over, man. Wolverine is now going to turn out to be Lorenzo or Lorleen. Wolverine is going to be turned out turned out to be Lorleen. Lara Croft turned out to be Lorenzo, man. They turned Lara Croft into Lorenzo, bro. Like, what is going on, man? It is Joe over, bro. And now she's like, okay, the work is done. I destroyed. I ended up destroying the franchise. I ended up destroying Wolverine. Let me hop over on CD Projekt Red. Let me destroy another franchise. Cause I'd be feeling too cute today, though, show. So now the Mary Kenny here is a stalwart defender of Sweet Baby Inc. She has now confirmed here that she now works at CD Projekt Red. It reads, <sighs> Without further ado, it's time to announce my new job. Today was my first day as a senior writer at CD Projekt Red, best known for the Witcher series and Cyberpunk 2077. I can't wait to talk more about my project. I'm thrilled to be getting back into RPGs, and my team is talented, welcoming, and just flat out cool. Here's to a new adventure. This would fill me with joy, but however, Mary Kenny here is about as woke as it gets when it comes to modern game development. Let's turn the sands of time back a little here to when Sweet Baby uh -oh. Inc. inadvertently started Gamergate 2 themselves. You all know the story of Cabrutus Rambo, who's yeah. a friend of the channel, getting his SBI detected, called out by Chris Kindred, who works at Sweet Baby Inc. The, and crazy, the craziest thing here is that they actually blacklisted <laughs> blacklisted his website, but now I feel like that it's not, so he got back. He got back. Now the website is good. Now the website is good, but they did try to blacklist his website. All of this exploded, and now Gamergate 2 is something that has been raging on ever since. During that saga, Mary Kenny here, who worked at Insomniac Games at the time, was throwing her hat in the ring and defending SBI from everyone calling for them to be removed from games entirely. Mm. Mary mm. Kenny back earlier this year stated, and I quote, Some of you don't seem to understand how narrative consulting on games works, but don't worry, I do. Yes, this is about Sweet Baby because I've worked with that team and they're one of the finest in the business. It starts with, dev team has an idea, maybe they already have an outline of their story and a core gameplay loop. Maybe they got a whole script and a playable build, either way, something is missing. Could be any number of things, a character feels underbaked, maybe a whole faction, the backstory of a map has weak sauce world building. And no one yeah. on the team has time to do the research and brainstorming yeah. in order to yeah. make it cool. Yeah, maybe the yeah, dev team yeah. has gotten a ton of notes from publishers and executives on things that aren't working the game. Maybe the notes are all internal, the team knows something is wrong but not how to identify or fix it. Wherever you are in development and wherever the notes are coming from, the problem is the same, something's wrong. And that the team mm. can't figure out how to fix it. That's when you call Sweet Baby. This yeah. next part is key because some of you seem really confused. Narrative consultants do not get final say. And they don't. Bro, like, 
like you got your audience bro like gamers are like giving you so much feedback they're saying that your games are the best bro and we're talking about insomnia games okay insomnia games they are talented though i know some of you be like yeah, 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 no, Skizzle, they're not they're not yeah, yeah. after the sweet baby and they're not okay but but let's be objective here right like they're actually very good they they have produced bangers after bangers though they know what their audience wants they know what we want that's the funniest thing about it that's the most saddest thing as well they know what we want but they're like uh, okay we uh, uh, i don't know like what gamers want right like so therefore we're just gonna call in sweet baby Inc. first of all they hate gamers they have openly said that they don't like gamers and they want to destroy the franchises they want to destroy the games they want more representation they want to and this is why we're getting like this much stuff um, i mean representation has gotten so bad that lara croft is now lorenzo bro like think about it this for a second <laughs> And, and, and I'm sitting here as a brown man. Where is my representation? Where is my representation? I demand my representation. I demand my representation. Two likes on the video so I can get my representation, guys. Come on, guys. Like, uh, come on, man. Come on, man. Let me get my representation, too, man. Don't override the core dev team and leads. It doesn't get into the game if we don't approve it. Wait they consult. It? They do research, pitch ideas, give feedback, and maybe even write scripts. But none of that gets into the game unless the core dev team agrees with it. I'm going to keep saying that because it's key. Sweet Baby is not, nor is any consulting group coming into Wreck Games. They're helping smooth out plots and deepen characters. They ease the burden on the core narrative team. They're additive in every way. And if the dev team disagrees with them on something, the dev team doesn't take the note. It really is that simple. Hold so up. no, Sweet Baby Hold did not kill your game. Of course, they had nothing to do with the layoffs. Duh, they gave notes, bitches, advice, and research. The studio made the Yeah, they're just giving them notes, right? They're just giving them notes. But if you do not agree with us, you're a terrible human being. So that's... uh, And, and apparently, like, the, you guys already must have seen that video that went viral as well, where the, the Sweet Baby Inc. founder just said that if they do not agree, just bully them. Uh, they, maybe she did not say bully. There was... I'm paraphrasing her, right? She did, uh, di she did say something like that. Uh... Like, force them or something like that. She used words like that. If you know, just put it in the comments. So they were like, yeah, we need to force them to actually do all of this. Like, hey, you gotta have representation. Gotta have representation. representation. Okay, if you're gonna force them to have representation, where's my representation? It kind of brown men get its representation too. Any white homies watching my video? Like, yeah, you guys, you guys want your representation? You guys want... Too bad, man. You ain't getting no representation, okay? You ain't getting no representation, right? Yeah final call on what went in the game if you have beef it's with us keep it with us end quote so mary kenny here is a defender and believer in sweet baby inc remember that a lot of the time when sbi actually gets involved with projects as time goes on it's because they know someone in one of these companies it's no surprise that wolverine has sbi attached considering sbi also worked right. on miles morales and spider-man 2 and since Wolverine obviously stars a straight white male character like Spider-Man 2 also did, you can expect the main character to be sidelined about halfway into the story like they did with Peter Parker. Why do they do this, you may ask? It's simple. They know you won't buy a game about X-23 being Wolverine the same way you would buy a game with Logan as Wolverine. But if they can lure you in with fancy graphics and a cool battle system which shows Wolverine doing all of his stuff, then you go and buy the game and you start playing it. Eventually, partway through, they can introduce X-23, which is Wolverine's clone and is obviously a woman, and immediately mm. switch the story to her being the main character over Wolverine. Effectively Dang. meaning that Sweet Baby Inc. gets what they want, which is of course your money, but they are able to steer the story and direction towards someone who is more diverse. How many times they've seen it, right? Like, The Last of Us 2 as well, right? With, with the Abby, the Brock Lesnar, and uh, yeah, I, and recently, you know, this meme also uh, went viral, I mean, for a reason, because they said the brother you, brother you, to Stellar Blade, but they're like, yeah, Abby, the Brock Lesnar, he can get his ass pounded in 4K in ray tracing. That's fine, you know what I'm saying? That's fine, that's beautiful, that's stunning, that's stunning, that's brave, that's stunning, that's stunning, that's strong, that's strong, that's strong, that's independent, right? Uh, and had it been we didn't have the leak that happened like a couple of years ago about The Last of Us 2 when Abby the Brock Lesnar killed Joel in the game, right? Yeah, we would, we would only find out about that when we would play the game. Like, duh, you know what I'm saying? Because at first, in the beginning, in, in the beginnings, you play in the beginning, <laughs> in the beginnings, you play as a... As that chick, Ellie, right? Ellie, right? And after that, you play as Abby the Brock Lesnar. Bruh. See? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bro, they might do the same crap with this one. And make no mistake, Insomnia games are talented, though. You feel objectively speaking, so graphically, this game is probably gonna be amazing. Gameplay-wise, it's probably gonna be very, very good as well. Story-wise, representation-wise, how much is it gonna be on the, the woke meter? 
That we're gonna find out very soon, fellas. First in their eyes, it's a catch-22, and it's very disingenuous. It's the same thing that was done with Spider-Man 2. They lure you with Peter Parker, then halfway through, suddenly, Miles Morales starts becoming the main character. <sighs> Only for the story to end with Miles as the main Spider-Man going forward. They pulled a fast one on everyone, and the reaction from the fan base was not very positive, to say the least. This Mary Kenny person is obviously now working at CD Projekt Red. Now, of course, we don't know exactly what game she's working on at the- uh, I, I need a brown Spider-Man, bro. I need a brown Spider-Man, bro. ...studio as of right now. As we can see from this fancy graph that CD Projekt- I, I'm joking, by the way. Like, I don't need my representation or anything like that, guys. Like, F all with that one. You know what I'm saying? Like, if, if it's genuine, then, then do it, right? Then do it. It but... shared a few months back as of April 30th, 2024. Not a single developer there is working on Cyberpunk 2077 anymore. Which means that yes, the game is finished, and there is no more support for it, which is fine in my opinion, since it is a complete single-player game now. All the other codename games down there, like Polaris, which is the codename for the next mainline Witcher game, as well as other stuff like Hadar and such, these are all side spin-off games being worked on within the Witcher universe, to the best of my knowledge anyways. Okay. That Park Place also did an article recently on how there's a Witcher multiplayer game being made too. Which isn't being made by CD in-house, by the way, but by an indie studio named Molasses Flood. The codename for that game right now is Sirius, but I doubt Kenny is working on that because she is working directly at CD Projekt Red as a senior writer. But she could be, of course. My guess is she is either working on Polaris, which is the mainline fourth Witcher game, or she is working on the remake of The Witcher 1. Does it say herpes? Wait, what? What the hell? Hey, 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 hey. Harpies. Oh, my bad. Yes. Which we already know is going to remove problematic elements from the game like the sex card minigame system. If you didn't know, mm. in the first game, Geralt would get trading cards based on the women he slept with in the game, pushing players to seek out women to sleep with in order to complete their collections. Oh, yeah. that's gonna be the first thing they remove. Yeah, yeah, they're gonna remove it. They're gonna remove it. Oh, absolutely, absolutely, right? Like, they're, they're gonna remove it. Yeah, that system is not going to exist in the remake, which already means that the remake will be taking away things fans enjoyed from the original. This is what modern game remakes are, however, taking something beloved and then stripping it of all its edges until it's nothing but a sanitized product. And it worries me when it comes to Witcher, because CD Projekt Red is clearly starting to go down the Insomniac Games route. They will say that diversity is their strength and all of that, but objectively, it clearly isn't. Because without this moronic tenant guiding their company in the past, CD Projekt Red was very clearly capable of making games that resonated with people yeah. the world over regardless of skin color or creed. The reality- And listen, there always have been representation and diversity in video games, right? Like, we always had diversity, bro. Like, for example, like this uh, Spider-Man game, or not Spider-Man game, I mean, uh, Assassin's Creed game, it's gonna have representation. It's gonna have diversity. For who? The Japanese people. The Japanese people. But then they like force Yasuke into this one right and, and uh, people are generally speaking just wanted like a Japanese male protagonist a, a lot of people are also saying okay you can still have Yasuke in it that's fine but like damn make it historically accurate though and in the very beginning they did say it's gonna be historically accurate then they said historical fiction then they apologize for the stuff that they stole uh, uh from like uh from individuals right like i'm talking about that that flag that uh, a group made in japan right like they stole ubisoft apologized for it uh, and, and right like the their the japanese people uh japanese youtubers are now talking about it we had the petition and now apparently a japanese politician is talking about them altering the japanese history uh, gamers are waking up absolutely right like, and so they're forcing DEI in games and uh, uglifying the female characters in video games as well. It's like, y y y there's a reason for it. There there's a reason for it, right? Like, they want to blur the lines between men and females. Uh, and it it's just insane. And a lot of gamers are now waking up. Now, apparently a list got leaked out. I actually seen this one here somewhere. Let me actually show you. Yeah, here, okay. Yeah, let me show you this. Roll it. We know what other games that are Sweet Baby Infected too. So this next story comes from another YouTuber named Smash JT. If you don't remember, Morgali. Smash is the same YouTuber who got his real-life job contacted by Kotaku journalists trying to get him fired for compiling their works on his website. Oh, he and now it turns guy? out that IMDB, or the International Movie Database of all places, has accidentally leaked some future Sweet Baby Inc. projects before release. So, uh -oh. let's go look at that, shall we? One of the games confirmed to be Sweet Baby aligned and hasn't released yet is the new Indiana Jones game from there Xbox. We As we can see here, Sweet Baby is listed within Indiana Jones' credits, which I mean, it doesn't release a- They are a production company? <laughs> oh my god, say you since when? They're an activist group that said that they don't like gamers, bro. They're not a production company, what the hell? That's not true, that's not facts, that is cap. That is 20 tons of cap right there me really since in the original it. debut trailer we have that now infamous game developer with the rainbow colored <laughs> shirt and the soy body telling everyone that indiana jones was being made for a modern gaming audience 
This was confirmation already that something was stinky behind the scenes, and it turns out Sweet Baby's diapers are indeed being found in machine games over there while they're making indie. So that game is now SBI infected. I wonder if people will actually buy that game knowing this. Especially considering that it is coming to PlayStation, even though it's made by Microsoft Studios. Mostly because Microsoft knows that Game Pass alone won't fulfill the cost of indie's game development, and I mean, they're right. But once more people find out that SBI is connected to indie, will they even buy this game? I guess time will tell. Time There's a whole list of games that are being worked on or have already- Yeah, God of War Ragnarok, there we go, man. Spider-Man 2, Alan Wake, Hogwarts Legacy, yup, it was, it was. The Wokey still got mad, though. That's the funniest thing, though. The Wokey still got mad. It had, like, trans representation in the game as well, but they still got mad, though. You feel what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, Mortal Kombat, that part I didn't know. Starfield, Starfield, I guess you make shit. I guess you make shit. Where's my Brahman at? Like, let me actually show you guys my Brahman here, okay? I wish I could say psych right now, guys. Uh, I know I, that's not my Brahman. Where's my Starfield Brahman? Yeah, uh, there we go, guys. Everybody say hello to my Brahman from Starfield. Yeah. And, and the characters, all the characters, they uglified the living crap out of the the, the, the black characters, the, the Chinese character, the Asian characters, all the characters that they had in the game, they uglified uglified them big time man like they stereotyped them they uglified them everybody they uglified all the characters in the game all uh, right this is why a lot of people were memeing on the starfield characters by saying that bro like what the hell like why are the characters this ugly in the game right like why are they this ugly in the game now we know the reason now we know the reason they cannot make like a good looking black black dude black chick in the game right and recently we, we covered this in our video because apparently one of the art designer came out right so he was saying that i don't like the gamer get people basically saying that the people that call woke stuff out right like you and i right let's just say that but he went ahead and said that i was pitching some black female designs like uh, he was pitching some ideas right and the chicks were looking smoking hot right and then he was saying that i would like send them for approval the design for approval and the designs that i would get back would essentially not be them and they would be like changed like crazy ultimately to like this uh the woke stuff right like to uh, the uh, for example, right, this is a perfect example. Lara Croft on the left, Lorenzo on the right. So yeah, the, they would uglify the female characters. And he was like, I don't want to give uh, Gamergate people more fuel, but this time, where are the lies? So it, it, his wording carried a lot more weight because he's in the industry and, I mean, he was the guy that was uh, pitching the ideas that he was sending for approval his designs his female character designs he was still like you know uh, diversity inclusion the dei stuff but at least he was like sending in for like good characters good looking characters but ultimately they want they were like nah man we need to uglify them why are they doing that are they like really think about it for a second right like are they saying that black people are ugly because nah bro like come on man what the hell are they saying that black people are ugly is that what they're saying are they saying that the lgbt people are ugly because if you're lgbt watching this video right you just think about it for the for the, think about this for a second why are they uglifying all the characters right Cyberpunk 2077, we had Judy, she was LGBT and she was smoking hot in that game, so I guess that does not apply to her, but generally speaking, right, we're seeing that happen, are they really saying that, like, you guys are ugly like that? I don't think so, but they are saying that, we, we, gamers need to wake up, man, people need to wake up, bro, I mean, people are waking up, but... ...already been done by Sweet Baby that are listed here. In total, it's 39 games that were revealed here on this list alone. As you can see, stuff like God of War Ragnarok, Gotham Same Knights, Suicide sense. Squad, Zao, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, which makes me believe that AC Shadows will absolutely be Sweet Baby infected at this point too. There's no way Shadows is not aligned with Sweet Baby, come on, dude. Yeah. Yasuke, a black samurai of all things randomly <gasps> being inserted as a main character in a Japanese Assassin's Creed game? Sweet Baby Damn, is homie. absolutely involved. They're not listed here yet, of course, but I would bet some shiny schmeckles of my own money that they will be exposed eventually as to being involved. Because remember yeah, that Sweet Baby was founded by two ex-Ubisoft developers too, so them coming Bumble back to work for the same go. publisher they met at, Bumble it makes God. sense. This also makes me wonder if they're involved with Star Wars Outlaws 2, that wouldn't surprise me either considering it's about an ethnically diverse woman with a knockoff Sigourney Weaver haircut shooting men in space. Also, the new Wonder Woman <laughs> game is being made by Monolith, the people that made the Shadow of War and Mortar games. No, yeah, please. also Sweet Baby Infected. And of no, course Wolverine man. is also listed on there as well, which comes- Man, I was excited for that game, bro! What the hell?! And they say gamers are ee, gamers are misogynist, gamers are- Nah, genuinely I was hyped for that Wonder Woman game though. 
I dead as was though. You feel what I'm saying? And they, nah, man. Yeah, she is probably gonna turn out to be Wonder Man though. They're probably gonna make her make her a Wonder Man. Comes to the surprise of absolutely nobody at all. I mean, Sweet Baby themselves even confirmed that they're working on the game in this tweet here, which you can see on screen now. And let's not forget that CD Projekt Red has also been heavy in this kind of stuff as well, considering they were awarded a DEI award back in October 2023 by a company called 30% Club Poland, which does initiatives in Europe and beyond. They got the award, and it reads here, Menstrual Leave was implemented in CD Projekt in April 2023, and allows a menstruating employee experiencing pain menstruation to take one extra day off per month. Notice Holy how it crap. says menstruation. Holy crap, bro. Like, what were we talking about? Yeah, I remember I covered this story. It's like saying, like... So you're saying that, like... So why can't a man take a take a break like that, right? So men men also have boners, right? Like, Bruh. So you're saying that, yeah, men also get a break up, right? So does that mean that men gotta take a leave? What what the hell are we talking, bro? Like, what the hell are we talking, man? Like, what, what is going experiencing pain menstruation to take one extra day off per month. Notice how it says menstruating employee, not women. Yeah, they are all in on this, fellas. And if you think CD won't be ruined in some way by identity politics, need I remind you that this Mary Kenny of Insomniac has said in the past that every lever must be pulled in order to make gamers accept identity politics in games. This I'm baffled, bro. I'm baffled because this is gaming news. You feel what I'm saying, guys? Like, this is gaming news. This is happening in gaming. This is gaming news, bro. This is gaming news. We're getting this as gaming news. Can you believe it, fellas? Can you believe it? This brings us to this article where Mary Kenny was interviewed by DualShockers about this very subject, where she references the GLAD Gaming Report, which GLAD stands for Gay and Lesbian Alliance Against Defamation. They're an there organization that is a very big reason why your games have become much more woke and political over the years, by the way. They claim that only 2% of major games have queer representation, which that number, that feels grossly low by my own estimates. In the Western world, anyways, every game these days seems to have that representation to some degree, so GLAD is pulling numbers like 2% to make it seem like it's dire when it isn't. Anyway, here's what DualShocker said during their Mary Kenny interview, and I quote- It, feel like two, it feels like 200%, what are we talking, bro? Like 2%, you crazy, bro? Quote, Kenny, who started her career as a journalist, has written for some of the industry's most popular video games. From Marvel's Spider-Man Miles Morales and Batman The Enemy Within to The Walking Dead, the final season, and the upcoming Marvel's Wolverine. Kenny has helped construct some of gaming's most diverse characters, like Clementine and Violet from Telltale's The Walking Dead, but freely admits that more needs to be done in game development to make LGBTQ people feel like they are an important part of video game structure now and- They have been an important part for a long time. They always have been, bro. Nobody said that they were not. What are we talking, bro? Like, <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's been- uh it's been a pleasure covering this gaming news for you fellas out there. If you have not seen this video, definitely check it out, man. Like, this has been a crazy plot twist. If you've already seen it, though, then check out the video on the left, man. It's Joe over, fellas.